Hey, hey, hey! Now this is something I've been thinking about for a couple days now. Of course, as I'm sure a lot of you did after the trailer we got for Future Redeemed, I came back to Memorial Hall to look at all of the founder statues to match everyone together. And it was a whole lot of fun. And this is where I got the idea for this video actually. And the seventh founder right here for the central plinth. And as you can tell by the title and thumbnail, I'm pretty sure the seventh founder is a, or there's a high possibility that it could be a for a couple reasons. But before we actually go into that, I just want to go through these, um, go through each monument and read through them and kind of just see how different my thoughts are on them now compared to before when we had no idea who any of these were. Remember when we still thought Matthew was Faye and then obviously Shulk, another Shulk, and then Rex. So I just kind of want to go through these and see how different it is now that we know who they are. This is obviously um, Glimmer right here, founder of House Rhodes, a soldier of Agnes. This founder's fight to the death against the founder of Ortiz, which we now know to be Nicole. A soldier of Kevis was interrupted by a chance meeting with other founders, which was Matthew. And I actually have a clip of that on my channel where we see Matthew breaking up the fight between Nicole and Glimmer. Freed from the bondage of her flame clock, she joins the fight against Mobius with the other founders. Although a soldier, the founder is reported to have been exceedingly gentle and kind at heart. Additionally, her skill in the healing arts greatly contributed to the development of the medical science in the city in later ages, which makes sense considering she is a healer in Future Redeemed. In irrespective of starting life as an Agnian soldier, she is said to have surpassed 80 years of age, though it was, though the way she achieved that remains shrouded in mystery. Now, a couple reasons she could have lived past 80 because I mean, obviously she was freed from the flame clock, so she doesn't just go to her uh, 10th term and then, you know, have a homecoming at 20. So either that or she's part Aegis, so she would naturally just live longer as blades do. But the blade system doesn't really exist here. Even though there still are blades, the blade system doesn't exist. So I don't think any of the special attributes that blades have even, you know, I don't think they even are in this world will have any effect. So obviously the founder of House Rhodes is Glimmer. Next, the founder of House Cassini. We do not really know who it is yet. Shulk and Rex aren't the founders of their respective houses. They are just the mentors to the founders. So. And considering Rex and Shulk are party members in Future Redeemed, that means we have two more important characters we have not seen yet. Since um, Shulk and Rex are the mentors to those two founders and they're not party members, so they're two more important characters we haven't seen yet for Future Redeemed that are pretty important that um, Monolith is obviously saving for the main game. Maybe one of them is Mithra's child and that's where they finally come in. So both of Pyra and Mithra's kids are founders with Glimmer and whoever Mithra's child is. And then maybe Melia had a kid and that's the um, founder of the other house where Shulk is at. But for House Cassini, in memory of the founder of House Cassini and the city's liberatrix, much like with the founder of Reed, so the founder of House Reed uh, Shulk is the mentor to the founder of Reed. This statue too depicts this founder's respected mentor rather than the founder herself. So we do know the founder of House Cassini is a female. So maybe Mithra had a daughter just like Pyra? I'm not too sure. The speculation for the two uh, founders are kind of insane right now. But the mentor boasted a robust physique, wielding two great swords at once with utmost ease in facing down Mobius despite the loss of one eye. This is obviously Rex. He lived his life an unsophisticated sort, broad-minded but impassionate. 
impassioned and is said to have aided the founders in the fight against Mobius physically and spiritually. He was further reported to have been a free spirit whose qualities influenced the other founders, still young and impressible when the city was restored. And this actually makes sense that he had influence on the other founders because in Xenoblade 2, um, Rex was a very like outgoing and optimistic person. It typically rubbed off on the rest of the party in a good way. So Rex can be very motivational and inspirational when he needs to be. In indelible proof of this rebellious spirit can be seen time and again in the ethos of the house and generations to come. So maybe his like personality pass downs, passes down through, you know, Glimmer maybe since she's his child or through Mithra's kid or Mio because we know Mio is, it hasn't been outright confirmed, but it's basically confirmed, unconfirmed at this point that Mio is Nia's son or daughter, which, you know, would make her Rex's daughter. Now, founder of House Van Dam, of course, we all know it is Matthew. In memory of the founder of House Van Dam and the city's restorer and liberator. The original incarnation of the city was once laid to ruin by Mobius N's hand, and that's presumably the scene at the very beginning of the trailer where we see N actually killing Gondor, and Gondor basically exploding, perhaps sacrificing himself to kind of defeat N and save the city in the long term. The founder realized fully the power of Ouroboros, here for, heretofore limited, and fought against N, ousting him. This is most likely the fusion power. Once victorious, he gathered the old city's people, scattered to the winds, and reestablished the city. With the city restored, he left its government in the hands of the founder of Doyle, which we now know is Nael, his sister, and departed on a lonely expedition. No records exist of his fate thereafter. Heirs of Vandam's lineage only returned to the new city several centuries later. Oral tradition has it that the founder was master of the classical arts of fist fighting, and the scions of House Van Dam carry on the custom to this day, as we can see in our base game Gondor, so the female Gondor. And a little note actually, nice little detail, the reason, or most likely the reason why Gondor in Xenoblade 3 hates her name so much is because it came from um, Matthew's granddad Gondor, and obviously that's a male name she's stuck with a male name so that's probably why she hates it so much speaking of founder of house doyle we have not l which i absolutely love i hope she's a playable character at least some point in the game i really doubt it but i'm hoping they'll let us switch party members since that wasn't in the base game but in memory of the founder of house doyle and the city's liberatrix directly descended from those who established the first city of the first original city. Her whereabouts were lost after ends ravaging of the city of old, but upon encountering the other founders, she committed herself fully to the fight. So she does join the other founders in the fight against Mobius at some point. So maybe that's hinting she could be a playable party member, maybe at some point later on in the game. I really hope so, but I also really doubt it. This founder is said to have a familiar, familial relation to the founder of Van Dam, aka Matthew. Her and Matthew are uh, siblings, with scant extent records suggesting they were likely brother and sister, which they are. She fought alongside the founder of Van Dam then, who was the elder of the two, and brought the power of Ouroboros to completion. So this is actually kind of confusing considering her and Matthew are both Agnes, as we see in another clip, that they both have the irises in the left eye indicating that they're Agnes and we know only Agnes and Kevis uh, can like form Ouroboros pairs. I don't think uh, two Agnians and two Kevesi can form Ouroboros pairs. It has to be one from each nation. So them um, fully completing and realizing Ouroboros' power is kind of confusing considering they're both Agnian. Unless I'm somehow wrong but pretty sure they're both Agnian. Uh, said to have been bright and wise, this founder laid the cornerstones for much of the city's governance and legal system. Next, we have House Reed, which Shulk is the mentor of the founder. 
in memory of the founder of House Reed and the city's liberatrix. Rather than the founder herself, this statue depicts the founder's mentor figure standing as a sign of the deep reverence and devotion she felt for her teacher. So, the founders of House Cassini and Reed are both female. Um, again, Mithra's daughter, maybe Meli, had a daughter that Shulk was the mentor to. Uh, I, it's, it's, I, I don't know, it's really hard to tell, but we do know the two founders are female. The founder's master was unconnected to her by bond of blood, so it wouldn't be, you know, she's obviously not related to Shulk, so not Shulk and Fiora's kid, we already know that's Nicole, and I don't think Shulk had a kid with Melly, um, because obviously if it is Melia's kid, then it wouldn't be by Shulk. The founder's master was unconnected to her by bonds of blood, yet he raised her as would befit a child of one's own, it is said. Though of a calm and constant disposition, the sight of him on the battlefield, great red sword in hand, his Monado Rex, struck fear to fear into many a Mobius. And though the vicious struggle against Mobius cost this ferocious warrior his right arm, <coughs> the loss did nothing to diminish his desire to hone his martial arts each day, standing as a vivid testament to his indomitable will. And finally, the hound, the founder of House Ortiz is Nicole. In memory of founder of House Ortiz and the city's liberator, a Cavesi soldier, this founder was released from a flame clock system by the other founders and henceforth spent every last ounce of his energy for the cause to liberate the city as one of the first Ouroboros. With surpassing skill in mechanical engineering, the founder fought not with a blade, but with a weapon of his own fabrication. And this is the variable backpack he has on we see in the trailer that look like giant Nopon wings. And I actually have a theory that Lucky 7 came from Nicole, but I'll explain that in a later video. I don't want to get into it all now, but I have a theory that Nicole actually created Lucky 7 that later down the line became Noah's blade. Uh, he was also responsible for laying the foundations of all the mechanical systems supporting the city to this day and he could have possibly built the Levness or the Pharaonis that the city is in right now like this city in base Xenoblade 3 uh, this city is in a giant Pharaonis and he possibly could have built it or laid the groundwork like the blueprints that would eventually become this Pharaonis Following the fight against Mobius, he poured the remainder of his days into rebuilding the city before finally perishing at the age of 80, though how he attained that feat despite his origins as a Kefesi soldier remain unexplained. So him and Glimmer, both of their monuments talk about them living past 80 um, from like an unknown reason or an unknown way of them living past 80. So they have some kind of connection i'm pretty sure it's them becoming ouroboros that lets them break the flame clock cycle and live to 80 since they kind of were the only cavessian agnes soldiers fighting in the war at least from what we know and the most important part of the video i'm sorry it took this long but we're finally here what the video is all about the central plinth the ouroboros stones cage the object on display upon this plinth is the very first original Ouroboros stone's cage. It is important to note that initial designs for the monument are said to have included a statue of a seventh founder in its place. Next to no information remains about the seventh, the seventh founder's identity and it is possible that there is not due to a simple loss of records. Rather, historians speculate that this is the result of a conscious decision by the seventh founder. So. The seventh founder deliberately did not want their, you know, they didn't want themselves to be on this uh, plinth. They didn't want to be recognized because I have a couple of theories. And as a little background information, we know the first Ouroboros stones, or just the Ouroboros stones in general, were made oh, by Nia, we and she used parts of her core crystal to create the Ouroboros stones. Now, where A fits into all of this, this is, I have a couple of theories as to how A could be here. Both are like different reasonings, but they still come to the same ending to where she could be the uh, seventh founder. 
So A is a very, very interesting and mysterious character. She obviously has a lot of resemblance to Elvis and that's no coincidence. Her hair is the same color. Her name is literally just the letter A, which means could mean multiple things. Elvis starts with the letter A. Uh, she has her own like type of Monado. Her class is called Monado Fencer. So Elvis is Monado. So she's obviously connected to him through that. And in one of the clips, she also has one of Elvis's wings, one of Elvis's Anza wings. That's also not a coincidence. Not anyone would just have that wing. So she obviously has a close relation to Elvis. And if that is solidified enough, she also has Elvis's red Aegis cord hanging from her ear as a little earring. So there's multiple like theories and speculations about who A actually is. A lot of people think she could be Elvis in disguise. She could be a second form of Elvis. Uh, that Elvis created kind of just like how Mithra created Pyra from herself. Elvis could have created A from himself for whatever reason. Some think that she could be Elvis's daughter. There's so many different theories out there. And I think this central plinth, the seventh founder, was A, a herself because we already have the rest of the characters already. We have all six are all five party members and a is replaced with not l so that leaves only one character left of all the seven characters that we've gotten in, in the game so far that we know about this most seven important characters that's all of them and a is the only one missing now the reason why i think she would want to keep herself hidden and obscure in here and not have people know who she actually is is because First little theory is that she actually is, you know, related to Elvis somehow. And this goes into like little headcanon theory speculation. Since uh, assuming Elvis is an antagonist like he's been portrayed to be with all these, uh, you know, tweets and the trailer, if Elvis is an antagonist, um, perhaps in Ionios Aegis's have a negative reputation and how Ionius would know about Aegis's despite the blade system not existing is obviously through Rex and Nia. Rex and Nia obviously have knowledge on what Aegis's are and they would already know that Elvis is an Aegis because they would see that he has an Aegis core and they know there's three Aegis's, uh, Numa, Logos, and Ontos. Ontos disappearing in um, was it called a transition event? So this third Aegis showing up, they would kind of put two and two together that it is Elvis. And as we know, Rex is one of the founders of the Liberators who fought against Mobius and rebuilt the city. And as the Liberators are kind of known by everybody since it is a group, it's a big group uh, fighting against the main threat of the world, Mobius. So everyone would kind of know who the Liberators are. They're kind of a big deal. They're fighting to save the world, in fact, after all. So a lot of people would already know who Rex is and word wouldn't take long to spread, especially if it's from Rex. You know, Rex would explain what an Aegis is and their powers. It wouldn't take long for everyone to hear about that since it's coming from Rex, one of the founders of the Liberators, the biggest group trying to defend the world. So everyone would know what an Aegis is, and since Elvis is the only Aegis we see so far, assuming Mithra and Pyra aren't in the game or somehow Malos comes back, uh, Elvis, again assuming he's antagonistic, Aegises would have a negative reputation. And if people found out that A is Aegis related, you know, assuming she is the seventh founder, people found out that you know someone related to an Aegis helped build the city there would be you know kind of a public outcry because I can't really think of any other example but this may seem kind of extreme but just imagine 
like how would you feel if say like a nazi helped build um your society or whatever you wouldn't really feel too well about it so maybe that's how people would feel about an aegis helping rebuild the city so she kind of kept her uh identity hidden as to not cause any issues and that kind of transfers into the next little mini theory that she's actually actually console a this entire time because in xenoblade 3 we've seen every console in the game uh b through z every console except a there is no sign of console a anywhere in xenoblade 3 and a in future redeemed her name is literally just a so that could very well just be console a right there not to mention her outfit looks a lot like m's you know mobius m so there's a little connection there that kind of just brings it together even more just and just like with aegis's if people found out that a console I mean by extension mobius hope built the city people wouldn't really be too happy so again a would have to kind of conceal her identity as to not cause an uproar or massive panic or whatever so hopefully all of that made sense i kind of just went on a, a rant but hopefully that makes sense and yeah it kind of explains why the seventh founder if it is a would want to hide her identity there's so much shit about a it's insane she's uh, the most mysterious character we've seen so far and monolith obviously isn't telling us a lot of information about her because they want us to find out for ourselves when the game actually comes out so we have all six founders we have matthew not l uh nicole glimmer and then whoever the founders are of cassini and reed that rex and shulk mentor respectively we haven't seen them yet so we have all six founders and there's still one character missing that was revealed that has that isn't here and that's a and she already has a lot of you know mystery around her and i guess to kind of build on the aegis thing like i said earlier nia created the ore bore stones from her core crystal and perhaps nia needed a little help from aegises considering how strong aegises are uh nia used a little bit of her own core crystal to build for a boris stone so she could have used a little bit of aegis power to like infuse it in there with it to kind of help create um or boris stone and if a is somehow related to alvis which means she's part aegis she could have used part of a's power to help create the Ouroboros stone and that's one of the reasons why the Ouroboros stone is here instead of A to kind of symbolize that A was one of the um was one of the you know kickstarters for Ouroboros stones and another reason Ouroboros stone would be here because you know that's the power that the six founders used to fight off Mobius and reestablish the second city but in recap the seventh founder is most likely a and the two reasons or one of two reasons why she's hiding her identity is because she's an aegis or related to an aegis and aegis has a negative reputation assuming um alvis is antagonistic or she's simply just a console nice by extension little. mobius but um this could very well turn out to be true um it's very very possible that she is the seventh founder maybe not for the reasons i stated but huh? it's very possible a is the seventh hey, founder it's if you think about it for a little bit it's kind of obvious <laughs> that it very well could be a um but yeah that's just a little theory i guess or little mini theories i had as to how or who the seventh founder is and why it could be a um speculation is wild right now i'm i love speculating about xenoblade but um yeah that's really about it i got so many more videos i have to make in just two days but um yeah that's it a is seventh founder i'm calling it now it's kind of obvious but um 
yeah that's really about it so as always thanks for watching have a damn good day stay safe <laughs> be well and play some goddamn xenoblade